1973. So I decided to research the subject and thought you might be interested in what I discovered. The current sitting president has proclaimed by executive order that all persons are hereby required to deliver on or before the 15th all $100 Federal Reserve notes currently in their possession and deliver them to their local Walmart for redemption in Walmart products. And any future $100 Federal Reserve notes that come into their possession must be delivered and redeemed at a Walmart within 72 hours of receipt. Failure to comply with this order will be considered a violation of the law, which can result in incarceration not to exceed one year or a $10,000 fine or both. Sounds completely outrageous, doesn't it? Well, that's very much what happened in 1933. Back in April 1933, President Roosevelt signed Executive Order 6102 otherwise known as the Gold Confiscation, which required all Americans to turn in most forms of gold coins, other bullion, and gold certificates at a rate of $20.67 per ounce. But what you might not be aware of is that they didn't turn their gold into the U.S. government. Here is Section 2 from Executive Order 6102. All persons are hereby required to deliver on or before May 1, 1933 to a Federal Reserve Bank or a branch or agency thereof or to any member bank of the Federal Reserve System all gold coins, gold bullion, and gold certificates now owned by them or coming into their ownership on or before April 28, 1933. Executive Order 6102 required all Americans to turn in their gold to an independent private banking entity that is not operated by any elected government officials. Even to this day, many citizens believe that the Federal Reserve is part of the United States government. The fact that the common citizen has this misconception and nothing in the media or educational system has taken any prudent steps to correct this tells me that it was always meant to be deceptive to the public. Once the citizens in 1933 exchanged their gold for the $20.67 of federal notes per ounce, that gold became the legal property of the Federal Reserve. Our citizens sold it to them at the request of our government by penalty of law if not adhered to. Less than a year later, in January 1934, the Gold Reserve Act was passed, which required the Federal Reserve to surrender all of its gold and currently held gold certificates to the U.S. Treasury. The Gold Reserve Act of 1934 didn't force the Federal Reserve to turn over its gold for free. Remember, the Fed had paid out to the citizens at a rate of $20.67 per ounce, but then ended up turning around the very next year and receiving from the U.S. Treasury the statutory rate of $35 per ounce. That's a profit of $14.33 per ounce in one year. What a deal. Here's what the original Gold Reserve Act of 1934 says. Upon the approval of this act, all rights, title, and interest, and every claim of the Federal Reserve Board, of every Federal Reserve Bank, and of every Federal Reserve Agent in and to any and all gold coins and gold bullion, shall pass to and are hereby vested in the United States, and in payment, therefore, credits in equivalent amount in dollars are hereby established in the Treasury in the accounts authorized under the 16th paragraph of Section 16 of the Federal Reserve Act. And heretofore, by this Act amended, balances in such accounts shall be payable in gold certificates, which shall be in such form in such denominations as the Secretary of the Treasury may determine. So following this Act, the Federal Reserve didn't have possession of the physical gold, but it ended up with the gold certificates that are backed by the physical gold, and it still owns these certificates to this very day. 
the last fixed statutory price for gold was established in the early 1970s at $42.22 per ounce, and that is still the liability cost for each physical ounce of gold represented by a gold certificate that the Fed holds today. On the Federal Reserve balance sheets, the value of gold certificates is listed at a little over $11 billion. At the statutory value of $42.22 per troy ounce, that comes to 261,416,390 fine troy ounces, or 8,131 metric tons of gold. The 2017 U.S. Treasury Annual Report states that there was 245,262,897 fine troy ounces of custodial deep storage gold in their coffers. This means that the Fed has ownership on their books of every ounce of deep storage gold reserves that the Treasury Department claims that's in existence. My interpretation and assessment of this research is that a government fleeced an entire national population to legally sell their wealth to a private company called the Federal Reserve, relinquishing the control of every ounce of gold of a nation's bullion reserve for the statutory price of $35 an ounce in 1934, and thus condemning the future generations of an entire national population to a time of economic chaos and uncertainty. Put yourself on a personal gold standard and convert as much of your fiat currency into precious metals as you can. What are your thoughts about the ownership of the depository cold storage gold bullion? Do you think it belongs to the citizens? Or do you think it was foolishly traded away to a private entity at the strong arm of a government?